Hey guys, welcome back to Study Christ. I am Char, and today we'll be reading Numbers chapter 11. I am using the NIV Jesus Bible, and I was able for like the first time in I don't know how long to go and read ahead and make my notes. So hopefully it'll make this process a little more smoother. But before we get into reading and studying God's word, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise on today. Lord, we ask that you bless this fellowship, bless this group, bless those that read and study along with me. Give us a comprehension to understand what we are reading and help us to rightfully divide your word in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so excuse my chair. My children were adjusting it. <laughs> All right, so chapter 11. I'm going to go ahead and flip this the other way just in case I have to write something. Lift my glasses up. All right, chapter 11. Now the people complain about their hardships and the hearing of the Lord. When he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burnt among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord and the fire died down. So that place was called Taborah because fire from the Lord had burned among them. So for me, it was important to look up, you know, complaining and uh, hardship. Complaining is a statement that a situation is unsatisfactory or unacceptable which is very interesting because we do this often towards God, but we also say God is everything and God knows best. Hardship, severe suffering, or privation. Uh, obviously, we know what the meaning of this is because it gives it within the same sentence. All right, verse four. The rabble, which means a disorderly crowd, a mob, with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing. Well, it is crying with pain, grief, or anger. So it's not just like regular complaining or crying. It's just like anguishly crying. Like, oh, this is so painful. If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. So, <clears throat> we know what manna is, right? Manna is what God had prepared for them to eat because they were in the wilderness and they needed to eat. So, this is what God gave them. But now, because mind you, they had nothing first, and then God gave them manna, and now they're complaining about the manna. The manna was like, a coroner and um, I looked that up and aromatic Mediterranean plant of the parsley family leaves and seeds used as culinary herbs seed and look like resin resin was sticky flammable organic uh, product the people went around gathering it and then ground it in a hand mill or crushed it in a mortar um, a mortar, I'm um, pretty sure you have seen in ancient uh, movies and things like that, is a cup-shaped receptacle, receptacle um, where they grind up, you know, herbs and plants and things of that nature. They cooked it in a pot or made it into loaves, and it tastes like something made with olive oil. When the dew settled on the camp at night, the manna also came down. Moses heard the people of every family wailing at the entrance to their tents. The Lord became exceedingly angry. And Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant? To the land you promise an oath to their ancestors. Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep well into me. Give us meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people. 
by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you are going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. If I have found favor in your eyes and do not let me face my own ruin. So pretty much Moses is saying like, this is a big burden. Like you have people complaining and he doesn't have the resources to remedy of their complaint. So he's turning to God and say, you did this to me pretty much. Like you have given me this, these people, you have given me this burden because they're looking to me to answer them or to satisfy them. And I cannot. Verse 16, the Lord said to Moses, bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there and I will take some of the power of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. They will share the burdens of the people with you so that you would not have to carry it alone. All right, so God is providing a solution. He cried out to God. He was very real, honest, open. God, I need help. And God said, okay, I will provide the help for you. And he did. 70 of Israel elders are to help him carry this burden. And you know, fast forward to today, modernly, you know, churches have elders and they too carry the load and burden on behalf of the minister or pastor. That's if a church is luxury enough, luxurious enough to have that because some churches are too small. Some just don't have the people because the state of elder, if you read in the New Testament, there are some criteria that they have to meet in order to hold those positions. All right, verse 18. Tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow. When you, when you will eat meat, the Lord heard when you will, if only we had meat to eat. We were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat and you will eat it. You will not eat it for just one day or two days or five, 10 or 20 days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and you loathe it because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? So pretty much becoming ungrateful, inconsiderate, selfish, like, Imagine God doing something for your good and you're complaining about it, which oftentimes we do because we don't understand why certain things are happening. But for something like this, for example, we know why they were, it was necessary for them to leave Egypt. But when they start having a little discomfort or run into a little problem or have their mind, their flesh created a problem, now it's why did we ever leave why did you ever bother us so really ungrateful verse 24 but moses said here i am among six hundred thousand men on foot and you say i will give them meat to eat for a whole month would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them the lord answered moses is the lord's arm too short now you will see whether or not what I say will come true for you. So pretty much saying, how in the world are we going to do this? How are you going to do this? Pretty much because Moses has already admitted that he can't do it. But clearly he's talking to God who can do anything. But he's still, you know, talking with um, no faith and just cluelessness, right? So God had to get him straight. Like, my arms ain't short. I'm not incapable. I'm not disabled. I can handle this. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him. And he took some of the power of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Eldon and Medan had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been, who had been Moses' aide since you spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord will put his spirit on them. 
Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Now a wind went out from the Lord and drove quail, excuse me, and drove quail in from the sea. It scattered them up to two cubits deep all around the camp as far as a day's walk in any direction. All that day and night, all the next day, the people went out and gathered quail. No one gathered less than 10 homers. Then they spread them out all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth and before it could be consumed, the anger of the Lord burned against the people and he struck them with a severe plague. Therefore, the place was named Kibroth Hatala because they burned the people who had craved other food. From Kibroth Hatava, the people traveled to Hezareth and stayed there. All right, so a lot was going on and taking place in this particular segment where, hey, they cried out for meat. God provided the meat, but it came with a with a cost. It came with repercussions. And that's just like modernly, like, you know what? We ask God for something that we should not have or is it for us. And he said, okay, I'll give it to you. Because you kept nagging me and you kept asking for this thing and now it comes with consequences and boom. And then, you know, what we do, we get into our feelings, we get all upset. Why, why, why? And it's like, you're going to reap what you sow, one. And again, there's always consequences for your action. All right, we do have a sidebar here. That seems to be the only one. Numbers 11, 1 through 3. The fire from the Lord. The Israelites was prone to complain against the Lord and his anointed leaders. At an earlier stage, only three days after their miraculous deliverance from the Egypt army at the Red Sea, they murmured against God because they lacked water. That's Exodus 15, 22, 24. Here, after another three-day journey, they complained again for unspecified reasons. Their complaints demonstrated a failure to trust God to meet the needs of his people, even though he had always cared for them. This act of rebellion uh, necessitated in the judgment of God, which came in the form of fire from the Lord that consumed some of the people. The dual attributes of God's judgment and his mercy are on display. Some of the people on the outskirts of the camp were destroyed, but not all of the people throughout the camp. The fire from the Lord is both an act of judgment and a warning to the entire nation. Fire is symbolic of the judgment of God against the contaminate, excuse me, contamination of sin. During his earthly ministry, two of Jesus' disciples asked him if they should call down fire from heaven to consume an inhospitable Samaritan village. Jesus, however, rebuked the disciples. The coming day of the Lord at the end of, his, of this age will be marked by the same fire of judgment. This fire will purge the earth and all created things from the contamination brought about by sin. Those who remain hostile to God will be destroyed and thrown into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. These dire warnings function like the fire seen in Numbers 11. They demonstrate the unreveled holiness of God and his utter hatred of the sins that deface his good created order. However, God in his goodness allows time for those who do not know him to believe his word, urges people to turn to him while it is still today. Additionally, an urgency is placed on believers to make Jesus known to those who do not know him. The Lord desires that no one on earth would perish. All right, y'all. So we got we, we're here and it is our job and our duty to advise those around us who do not believe that, um, you know, repent and turn away from your sins while it is still day. Um, that's the, the beginning and the end of it. Like. It may, you know, people take advantage of time. You know, they have all the time in the world, so they believe. But you never know the day or hour which you will leave this earth, and you don't know the day or hour in which Jesus will return. So for whatever better reason is to encourage people to, hey, take advantage of right now. Have faith, believe, repent, and turn. All right, that's the reading for today, chapter 11. Um, I will see you guys in the next video where I will go over chapter 12. So obviously... I am, there's going to be a slowness because um, I used to just try to read them and post them daily, but I really want to take time and dig into God's word. There's no race and I hope you guys understand. So when I get through studying and going through chapter 12, I will post that. All right. Love you all. God bless. Take care. Bye.